Oh my gosh, hello guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Dylan, and today we're going to be talking about some BL manga that I have read recently. I'm just going to put them all in one video and talk about each and every one of them. Because I've been a little boys love crazy since I was born, girl. Like, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes! <laughs> all of the boys. So let's talk about some of them. So I'm going to order this video from, should I do nasty to cat to like wholesome or should I do wholesome to nasty? You know what, like a band-aid, let's just go from nasty to wholesome because we need to end on a good note and we'll start on a trashy note because it's me. So I want to talk about the first volume of Yari Chin Bitch Club by Ogaretsu Tanaka. This is the first volume in the series, which is a very, very interesting volume, to say the least. So this series originally started out as, like, a serial webcomic. Uh, I wasn't originally going to be a manga, but it got so popular that it became a manga. And so it honestly is very episodic because of that, you can definitely tell. But I really enjoyed this a lot. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this. Because even though it is very, very raunchy and very sexual, it's also very sweet. And this is about a bunch of, I guess you could call them gay teenagers. <laughs> some of them are out and proud, some of them are the typical... I'm straight, not gay, but I like dicks. Which makes no sense, but okay, whatever. <laughs> you do you, girl, you do you. You be your straight self and enjoy your dicks and booty, which are not girls, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I'm not judging. <laughs> We're all different and that's fine. All of our bodies are beautiful, but this derailed. What the hell did I just do? <laughs> Essentially, it's about a group of boys who are a part of, was it an art club originally? A photography club. It was a photography club, but it's not a photography club, girl. It is a sexcavation club of horny gay boys, basically, doing horny gay things. Yeah. <laughs> they basically, they do, they do a lot of things, they have a lot of toys, and a lot of things happen, and that's all I'm gonna say. But our main character, who's in the middle, who looks frightened as hell, is a straight boy who doesn't, well, kind of wants to be in the club because he's into, I think, this boy. I f no, not him. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, it is him, yes. He's into this boy, and this boy is into him, so it's like a little love triangle kind of thing going on, which is kind of cute. I really love this boy right here. I love him. He is adorable. I, I just, oh, I love him. He's so cute. And the rest of the club are the older members. They have been in the club for a long time, and they are nasty as hell. I actually share a birthday with this boy. This boy right here, the glasses guy who is a masochist. <laughs> the glasses guy who is a masochist. Me in manga format, like, for real. <laughs> and I didn't want to say that in this video, but I already did, so it's already out there. Yeah, I hope no one I know finds this video. <laughs> I'm a nasty boy. Okay, yeah, there were some tropes in this one I wasn't a fan of. Obviously, the straight boy who is straight, but he's not. You know, that's in, like, every BL, almost. Um, I personally like the BL that is, like, an out and proud, or the character who's out and proud and is not afraid of being himself. And these boys are just... They're all nasty. <laughs> well, I mean, this boy's cute. He's cute, he's cute, and he's confused. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I don't know if this review is making any sense, but I enjoyed it for what it is. 
<laughs> oh my god. It is it is not for kids though. This is definitely not for kids. There is an OVA of this which I haven't seen because it's not licensed and I don't watch anime that's not licensed. So maybe it'll get licensed someday and I can watch it, but for now I'm just going to let it be and enjoy this. There's three volumes out or there is in Japan, so hopefully you'll get all three of them from Sublime. Very, very happy to have this. It is super thick. Girl, like it is a thick book full of very wholesome things and a lot of holes. Okay, we're moving on. This is a manga that I'm very conflicted on my thoughts because well, let me let's, let me just preface, preface this by saying that I am a Satona Mizashiro fan for life. I will always love everything she writes because she is a goddess. And she recently came out with The Cornered Mouse Dreams of Cheese, or rather Seven Seas came out with her manga, which is a BL manga that she wrote, which to me, that was like a holy grail of a manga is to have one of my favorite mangaka write a BL like what more could I ask for? Unfortunately, this is an incredibly, incredibly messy, messy, messy story. Who girl, this is... This is messy. <laughs> it's basically about a guy named Otomo who has a wife who suspects him of cheating on her, so he and en she enlists a man to stalk him and watch him to blackmail him. And this man, who is this guy on the cover, is someone from his past. And he has always loved uh, Otomo. And they have a very... A very complicated relationship, a very kind of scary relationship in some ways. And it starts out like that. Like, that is part of the premise. So, it's not like... There's nothing that is super... Yeah, I was just kind of disappointed in this a little bit because I... I didn't really dig the relationship between the two of them. It wasn't t toxic, really, but it also didn't really captivate me. I may have to reread it and see if I like it a second time more. But I, the, the most interesting part of this manga was the beginning and the relationship between Otomo and his wife because I found that really, really interesting because the relationship is literally a front and they're married but they don't do anything together. They don't like share a love for each other. She, he just buys her things and that's their marriage. And that is so, like, horrible, but also interesting at the same time because it makes me think about, like, choosing the right person when you're dating someone, and if you're gonna marry someone, be careful. Don't marry someone who you don't love. It's really interesting, and that's what I love about Satomi Misashiro because she writes stories that are unconventional and the stuff that you wouldn't even really normally think about in a like romance story like usually it's very flowery and love and love is love and we love each other forever but there's some messy things in love and there's some messy people and some mean people and people that you shouldn't marry but it's so real it's so real and i really love that aspect of it there's also a lot about obsession with these two boy, these two men, I should say, they're not boys, they're men. Um, there's this obsession that one of them has with the other that is so unhealthy and so creepy, but, you know, you think about it and that's how sometimes love is. Sometimes love is creepy. And, I don't know, it made me think about a lot of things, but I didn't really like it. <laughs> But I still appreciate Satona Mizashiro because she is just so well, well written and well thought out and it makes me think all the time and I love that aspect of her writing and her stories. <sighs> so I am conflicted and I will probably buy the next volume and there is another volume coming out soon and I will check it out. 
but it wasn't my favorite. So let's switch gears here and talk about some manga that I absolutely loved. Um, I really enjoyed the two that I just talked about, even though I have mixed thoughts on both of them. In a way, I, bo I enjoyed them as well, so... I don't know, I have, I have mixed opinions. But these two, I adored so much. And I want to talk about them. <laughs> So I read The Wise Wise Beast of the Wizarding Wisdoms by Nagabe, which is so my aesthetic and so me. And I'm so glad that I read it, and I'm so glad that I own it, and I'm so glad that I'm holding it in my hands. I'm so glad that it exists. It is a furry BL manga, and I am here for it forever. I will love it forever. It is essentially about a school of wizards, a magical school, where all of these wizards are basically gay, and they're gay boys, and they fall in love with each other, and they're all anthropomorphic animals. And <laughs> again, my aesthetic, everything about it, my aesthetic, I loved it so much. There were only a couple of stories that I didn't really like, because of personal issues, but I really loved pretty much every story in here. The first one we had was about a cat and a bunny, which was so freaking adorable. It was so cute, and their relationship is just adorable. So, so sweet. I also really loved the story about the wolf and the... Uh, goat, which the wolf wants to eat the goat, and it's like a, you know, it's a BL. I just, mm, oh, girl, I love this story. It was so cute. I, it's so sweet. And then we have a couple of stories that I didn't really like. There's one with a teacher, which was not my favorite. And it didn't really go anywhere, and it didn't really do much, and it just kind of was there to be there. So that was not for me. Then we had one which was really interesting about a warm-blooded animal and a cold-blooded animal. You had a deer and a snake, which was really cute, and I really liked their relationship a lot, actually. And then there's the really kind of complicated and kind of toxic relationship between these two birds. There is a peacock, I believe he's a peacock, who is very vain and very much all about himself and he's trying to get a girlfriend. And there's a crow who is in love with him, but the crow is obsessed with him and it's a very toxic relationship and he starts like keeping people away from him so that he can be only his. And I just, I did not like that. I was like, girl, I was like, Jesus. <laughs> this, and it's a crow, so it's like, it makes sense because you know, in society, crows are seen as, like, this evil being. So it makes sense that the crow would be a horrible person. But I was not about that. I was not about that story at all. And then you have this really interesting, kind of gross story about these two bats, which I really liked. And it reminded me a lot of... Uh, Mysterious Girlfriend X, which is one of my favorite anime. I love that anime so much. It's a lot like that, um, but it's really, really interesting and just, it's kind of funny. I really like that story, actually. And then you have what I thought would be my favorite, and it didn't end up being my favorite, is the story about this unicorn and the griffin principle, which is really cute in hindsight, but it wasn't actually my favorite story, which is surprising because I am a unicorn. Me. <laughs> That's, that should be me. But their relationship, again, was also kind of just weird, but also had some really interesting things to say about being gay that I really, really liked. I really liked the unicorn's character because he's ostracized from his, you know, community and he, because he's gay, because he likes men, and all the other unicorns think he's weird for doing that. And I found that really, really interesting and really real, and I really appreciate Nagabe for writing that into the story. So that was my favorite aspect of that story. 
Then we have probably the cutest story, which is the last story, and which is my favorite story, which is the one... I don't... What is this one called? Is there a name for it? It's called Motchley and Charles Beast and Men, and it's basically about a human boy who falls in love with a bear, and I was here for it. That is my life. That is me. I want a bear for myself. It was so cute, so sweet, and I enjoyed it immensely. So yeah, I would highly recommend The Wise Wise Beasts of the Wizarding Wisdoms because it is so cute and so sweet and really real and raw and I really, really enjoyed it and I'm so glad that this is in print. Thank you to Seven Seas Entertainment for bringing this out. Thank you, thank you so much. And then we finally get to our last BL title on this list, the favorite of mine, which is Our Dining Table. This is written by Mita Ori, and oh my goodness, is this adorable. This is essentially about a man who has a very, like, rocky relationship with his family. He is kind of ostracized because of various reasons. He's adopted, but that's, that's not why he's ostracized. There's other reasons I won't get into, and I just really found this really cute. He meets this boy in a park, this little boy named Tane, who ends up eating his onigiri. I believe it was an onigiri. Was it an onigiri? It was like a rice ball. And basically, he meets the older brother Minoru, and they form a relationship together, and it is so, so sweet, and so, so cute, and so wholesome, my god, my body temperature was just melting because it is so, so cute and so sweet. It's also a cooking manga because they end up forming a bond around cooking and how making meals and eating meals together forms this relationship between the two. And I found that really, really, really sweet and quite adorable. I just... <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about this manga, and it also felt very complete. I really loved the ending, and I loved how it wrapped up. It is a perfect little one-shot that I am so glad that I read, and I will reread over and over again because it is so cute. I also just really love the artwork and the lines and the style and the shadows. It's all really well done and really really well drawn. This is honestly a must-buy purchase if you're a BL fan. It is so good, so emotional, so real, and I just really, really loved it. I'm gushing. I need to stop because I'm just saying it's so amazing, and I'm not really saying why because I'm just, I, I, I can't talk about it because it's so, so good. <sighs> that makes no sense. <laughs> but anyway, guys, what did you guys think of any of the titles that I discussed in this video? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Let me know in the comments below and we can talk about it. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. And please remember, for the love of all that is gay, stay sexy.